Morning folks, uh, day three, uh, it's Apple Cross and Ullapool today. Uh, looking forward to that, particularly Apple Cross though. Uh, you see how I tackle the famous road up to the uh, top, which the name escapes me. Uh, big Red's ready to go. Just need to put some petrol in. Uh, and the good news is it's not raining. It's a bit moody, a bit sort of changeable, but it's not raining at the moment. There is forecast for rain on and off. But I think you tend to find around here it'll either rain or it won't, it's a bit unpredictable. Um, lovely breakfast this morning, sat watching porpoises and seals in the lock. It was uh, it was great and the hosts have a little uh, one of spotting scopes in the dining room. It was fantastic to just watch the porpoises fishing uh, out in the lock. And then a couple of seals came in to join the fun. Um, it's the most interesting breakfast I've had for a long time. Anyway, let's get going. Like I say, go and put some petrol in and off we go. See what the day brings. Uh, all right, take care, speak later. Hi folks, welcome to video three of my uh, Scottish tour of the Northwest Highlands. I hope you're enjoying what you've seen so far and uh, thanks for watching. So, as I turn onto the A890 here, uh, I'm setting off today to do the uh, Apple Cross Loop, which is one of Simon Weir's rides out of his uh, Biker Britain series. It's the uh, Biker Britain The Tours. It's number 34, if you want to have a look at the exact route, though I'm doing a slightly longer version, as my start point is, uh, is in a different location. It's about 240 miles. A uh, little cheer this morning, as there's no rain at the moment, though the roads are a bit gravelly and greasy, so... Uh, Need to take a bit of care and um, of course there's that wonderful sort of damp foresty pine smell that's making the air really nice and fresh so so far so good uh, cloud cover in the distance but i can see a lot of the mountains today um, lock Karen now to my left and obviously a little tunnel appears i have to give the engine a bit of a rev um, and picked up nothing on the microphone so that was a bit pointless so uh, anyway, coming now to the hamlet of Strathcarron, which is basically a level crossing in a hotel, so uh, don't expect lots of shopping and fun at this place. Um, they'll be turning left onto the A896 shortly um, towards Loch Carron, which is on the edge of Loch Carron, if you see what I mean. Now entering the uh, small village of Loch Carrad, um, which is on the edge of Loch Carrad. Um, small, typical Scottish village. There's a spa, there's a garage, a couple of other little shops, but not a lot else. And all these are like holiday homes. Um, uh, a lovely view across the loch, and obviously the location is, is pretty spectacular. Uh, though I shudder to think what it's like in the middle of winter when there's nobody here. Um, just pulled up, thought I'd just grab a drink and uh, the snack out of the top box. A couple of photos of Big Red and then uh, time to tackle the uh, Pass of the Cattle and oh boy, did I not know what was coming. Uh, I think I'll just let the video tell the story and I'll see you the other side.
<laughs> God knows if you'll hear anything, God knows if you can see anything. Uh, I am at the top of the up cross pass. Uh, God, where can I start? Uh, made it, I've just got to get down now. As you can see, conditions have absolutely deteriorated. I don't even know if you'll hear any of this. Uh, it's owling wind, driving sort of drizzle. Visibility is about 50 feet. I think it's the first time I've been, uh, I'd say scared, but pretty nervous on a motorbike. That was hair raising the last sort of half a mile, as uh, I'm sure people have rode it before will understand. Uh, right, I'm going to shut up because uh, it's freezing up here. Uh, time to head down. See you soon, folks. Oh, it's the upper cross pass dub. <laughs> Bloody hell, that was uh, Larry. Um, I did do a video on the top of whether it actually makes it. I really don't know because uh, it was howling, raining, fog, shit, everything up there. Um, completely on my own on the car park. Um, I think I said up there that's the first time I've genuinely been quite anxious on a motorbike. Worst problem was actually the visor steaming up. Um, not so much the visor, but my glasses. It's big. Look, it's not taking that up there. Uh, one. And uh, my glasses just started steaming up. Despite having put anti mist on them this morning. Um, my bloody visor is. I don't know what's wrong with the seal. The brain's just driving inside. So I had to ride it up, the visor up, and it sort of got a bit difficult. But it's done, major bucket list tick. I'm now at the Apple Cross Inn, which is shut. It's not open until three o'clock this afternoon, but it doesn't matter. I'm here and I've done it, that's the main thing. That's the view behind me. It's quite spectacular down here, so. Right, onwards and upwards, round to, I think, Shield Egg next. Uh, see you later, folks. Take care, bye. Once you leave Apple Cross, you realise quite quickly um, you're moving into a, a very different part of Scotland. The scenery really opens up. Um, you get this tremendous feeling of space and uh, the views are absolutely fantastic. Um, and you realise quite quickly a motorcycle is the, the tool that you need to do a trip like this, I think personally. For example, you'll go around a bend and you'll just get a view like this and you slow up and you just take it all in. It's almost spiritual at times.
but then as I turn onto the uh, main road uh, there's a builder's wagon in front of me and that's when you realise there's people that uh, live and work up here and have a, such a different lifestyle to certainly what I'm used to. I thought I'd go and have a look at the uh, little town of Shield Egg, uh, popular with uh, tourists. Uh, there's not a lot here, there's a cafe there with a few lads having a brew. If I decide to press on, I'm just enjoying the ride too much to be honest. Uh, but Shield Egg is a very, very pretty little town. But again, working town, uh, hence the sheep in the middle of the village. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to uh, let the camera roll and you can enjoy the view as I saw it. for all the pool going to get some proper food there hopefully and, uh, and head back to the digs or inland to the route. All right speak to you later. Well if you can understand that good luck to you because uh, I can't make head or tail of it. I think basically I was saying the view was fantastic, the roads were empty and I'm getting near all the pool and I'm ready for some lunch so uh, chip shop here I come.
Well, after the best uh, fish and chips I've had for a long time, it's time to leave Ullapool and head southeast and make the journey back towards my digs at Dorney. Uh, I'm now uh, on the A832, as you can see, not a lot of traffic again, even though this is one of the main roads in the area. Um, the rain's still holding off, which has got to be a big bonus. So uh, this is the uh, turning just before Garve onto the A832 which is going to take me uh, all the way back to Strathcarron. Um, I think it's about 50 miles, something like that. Um, all little gathering Porsches coming up on the right. Um, well, there's only three, I think there was more than that but uh, I didn't catch them all. Um, and pretty much the road's mine again on, on, uh, on my own. Um, one thing you do see a lot of is this wonderful gorse which adds a lovely sort of yellow to the uh, quite wild scenery. Um, the other thing I was going to point out is coming up on the left shortly, where are they? What I nicknamed the round the world cyclists, there we go. Um, usually one or two of them travelling at a barely above walking speed with uh, enough kit on the bikes that's obviously going round the world. Well, that's what I think anyway. And soon the A832 um, turns from A road into single track road in the space of about two miles. It's something you get used to in Scotland. Um, lots of lovely roaded endrons each side um, in full flower, which again adds some lovely colour to the scenery. Uh, and the road again is largely deserted. There's plenty of passing places. And one thing I've noticed is people uh, are quite courteous. There's no there's no idiots or big heads and uh, I keep banging on about motorhomes but so far I've just found them largely courteous and uh, not being any bother at all. And in no time I'm back to my tunnel that I featured earlier. Um, and yes, here we go, yet again I'm going to give the engine a great big rev like you do and yet again the microphone picks up sod all. So, uh, And uh, finally, for one last little poke in the ribs, I suppose, it decided to just start raining again. Um, albeit, it was much lighter and it was no real bother. And by now, I'm only about two miles from my digs, so uh, ready to call it a day. Sit down, nice hot bath and a beer. Anyway, there you have it, the Apple Cross Loop. I uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed riding it. So, uh, see you again in the next video. Hi folks, well, um, about six weeks down the line now, uh, I'm actually sat in my home office, um, I forgot to do a video um, up in the B&B, usually I like to do a little summary video of my day and uh, I think I was just that tired I forgot, so uh, here I am, I thought I'll still do one, because I like to have a think about how the day went, what I could have done better, what I learned, what I enjoyed what I can share with you, the viewer. Um, the the highlight, Apple Cross Pass, I think, simply because of the level of achievement, uh, I've done it now. I know loads of others have done it. I'm not the first, I'm not the last, and it's not by means the, the hardest road in the world, but to me, it just, the weather really made it a challenge. Uh, I couldn't see anything. Uh, by the time we got to the top, the rain was driving quite hard. Um, I know I banged on about my leaking helmet, but I have found the problem. Um, it's operator error, as to be expected, I suppose. Um, HJC helmets have a clip on them, and the idea is you, you can lock the visor shut in bad conditions. And I've never bothered because the visor just shuts quite happily on its own. What I didn't realise is when you apply that clip, it actually pulls the visor onto the seal and stops it leaking. So... Uh, 
it was never going to stop leaking in the month of Sundays until I locked it. So uh, hey ho, every day's a school day and uh, it won't happen again. And certainly it's been better since. Uh, what else? I think just discovering how big Scotland is. Um, if you've ever travelled to New Zealand, particularly the South Island, there's parts of Scotland were very, very similar to the areas of um, Otago and uh, around Queenstown. This feeling of just emptiness, almost spiritual at times, and certainly on a motorbike, you really get a sense of what a wonderful big place it is. Uh, much bigger than the likes of the Lake District and the Peak District, etc. Um, and it is wonderful. Uh, but also you have to remember a lot of people live and work there. So uh, you have to respect what they, their lifestyle is so different to what we experience in more suburban areas. Um, some of the roads, you know, empty roads, riding for miles and not seeing a car and just mountains around you. It's fantastic. Um, I think certainly today's ride provided an immense satisfaction factor and I've really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, BMW GS is the bike for the job. There's no denying people go on about BMs, blah, blah, this, that and the other. But if you want a tool to do a job like that, there's nothing to touch a GS. Um, so uh, never missed a beat, never faltered. Um, okay, so yeah, I just hope you enjoyed that video and uh, as much as I enjoyed making it. And uh, I'll see you in the next one, folks. So uh, ta for now.